Hey, 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 everybody, guess what? I'm going to do a stage tutorial. And uh, this is kind of out of the blue, because I didn't really plan on doing this now. I figured this would be kind of an extensive thing, but I just got some uh, Tales of some tales of Fantasia uh, background sprites from uh, Sprite Database. This is what they look like when you assemble them. They come a tad bit not fully assembled, but uh, let me show you what they look like beforehand. So, PlayStation, Tales of Fantasia. Scrolling uh, downwards, I am making the Valhalla Planes 4. So this is what the image really looks like before I combine the pieces. Um, the way these sprites are, are they, you just have to combine them all together. This on top of this, this on top of this, this on top of this, and this all the way to the side here, or side here, whichever one. This is obviously the ground, this is a background, this is combine, 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 add to this, and you eventually get this. So I have separated them already, these are just other images. This is going to be background um, A, this is in the far background, this is background B, because this is just behind the characters, and this is uh, foreground. Uh, there's no A because it's just foreground, so it's it's literally just three sprites. Yeah, It's just three, three sprites that are, are going to make this stage. It's going to be a simple stage, however, I'm going to make this into parallax. So it'll give the impression that it's a 3D stage, or at least try to. You can also find various other stages here that look pretty awesome, in um, in the, 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 the in, that would look awesome in Mugen. And also, that's always uh, fun to look at these things. Ah, Lone Valley. Ah, it's a tile set. That's uh, cool. So. I already separated the sprites. I did not convert them to 256 color. I'm going to do it right now. And also I'll get Fighter Factory open. Um, to make stages, I do not use Fighter Factory. I use Fighter Factory to build the SFF. To actually code the stage, I use a notepad and I simply have Mugen uh, testing on and off like crazy. So let's load up PaintShop Pro. I use, I'm using X3 uh, version, uh, which is version 13 obviously. And they're currently up to version X5. Uh, I don't think it makes a difference because uh, all of them are more or less the same thing. You can use GIMP or Photoshop or whatever else you want to use for converting them as long as they're 256 color index images. So I'll use the ink dropper, left click, right click, get the first two green color. So that's the green, then image, palette, well, decrease color depth, 256 color palette. It's gonna come up with this and this thing here. If you pick on the middle icon with the uh, with the spectrum here, you'll get this green. Then shades of blue to white. Then you hit OK. Then you hit I image again. Go to palette. Go to set palette transparency. No transparency. There's three options here basically, and you select the middle one. Uh, select transparency value to the current background color green proof. It turns invisible. Now, if you use this one, you can select which color you want based on the um, the palette uh, box here. Uh, this is zero zero. This is two fifty six down here. So it's sixteen per row. That's a lot of colors. So see, I can more or less choose what color I want to not show up. Like see that blue or that blue or that blue. But I just want green, so that's perfectly fine right there. Now I'll just save it. It's already a PNG file, so I just need to save it. A shortcut. To this is just go to palette and hit set palette transparency to green like that and it'll automatically index it and save then image again same thing with the third image set transparency green save cool that's all done with pretty simple huh now um, I'm just gonna open these up quickly and save them just so the transparency shows here on the uh, the sample this can help because, um, well, I do this because if you change them without really, if you if you use them and you don't check them again like I just did with iDraw, then you may accidentally have like a 24-bit image somehow. Even though you set it to 256 and with the alpha color, it may still do that. I don't know why or how. So go to sprites. Um, this one. Go to new. Add PCX or PNG or whatever. Now I'll select background A, background B, floor. I'm going to put this group 0, pretty simple, right? Access is going to be this with the uh, uh, the plus symbol on top. And do not crop will be 
crop the image before access. Then what do I get? I get my images just like that. Now it's always good to have them aligned just like this at the very top of the, uh, at the very bottom of the um, the access because when you code them <coughs> into Mugen, this is what's going to be shown first, the bottom half of it. Not the top half, but the bottom half. Okay, so this is all shown. So putting it like this is the best and easiest way to make stages. This is also the same, and then this is also the same, just like that. Now, what myself and some other character, uh, some other stage creators do is we'll assemble the stage in the SFF. So when we code it, we have a start position of 0, 0. So we don't really have to mess with start position. And someone like EX Shadow, who makes a lot of stages, like he poops them out like crazy. He's like a stork for stages. He just poops them out. And so basically what he does is he opts out the whole start equals zero zero code in stages, but even if he opted out, it's still start equals zero um zero. And it just, you know, ignores the fact that he opted it out and it still puts him at zero zero. So he assembles his stages in the SFF. And this is kind of assembled here. The only difference is we have to move them down to make them match properly. But anyways, the sprites made Saving uh, Mugen Beta is if you want to make a uh, win Mugen stage, Mugen 1.0 if you want to make a 1.0 stage. 1.1 is not released yet and cannot be used. It's If you use it, you're stupid. Plain and simple, you're stupid. Don't argue. <laughs> now we'll save this as uh, Valhalla Planes 4. Good. And that's all we need of Fire Factory. That's it. So this is the SFF. Now we'll go into Mugen, num, 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 Mugen. go to stages, paste it. Now, I will take stage 0, copy, paste, rename it, copy, paste to Valhalla Planes 4. So now, stage 0 becomes Valhalla Planes 4. Copy that, add it to my uh, select def file. Okay. Now going to Valhalla Knights again. Uh, Val, sorry, uh, Valhalla Planes. We'll open up the def file with Notepad. Notepad very handy. Always use for anything movement related in terms of editing. You can edit the characters, air files, and CNS and other f stuff like that. So let's change this to um, training room. Will be <coughs> Valhalla Planes for. The display name, which is what's going to be shown in Mugen, is Valhalla Planes 4 as well. Version date will be 9 13 2012. Mugen version 1.0, Arthur, me! Oh crap, nope. So, erased it. I, I like to erase it just because I think it's ugly to leave them there. That's just me though. Okay. So let's start off with explanation of all this. What, what am I seeing here? Uh, this is the start position for the camera in terms of left and right bounds. Um, if you're making a stage that has a slight animation, a animate and opening, like say the stage starts and it's on top and it pans down slowly, you would mess with this. <clears throat> but alternatively, you leave the start the start x and y to zero. This way, the stage will start like in the middle of everything, and you don't have to mess with it. Uh, and I'll erase those notes there. Uh, bound left, bound right basically means how far the player is allowed to move to the left and to the right of the stage. They should always be equal. Note, always have to be the same as bound right. Comment, no, uh, no exceptions. By altering these to some strange um, values that are not equal to each other, you're going to have a, a slight dis uh, advantage slash disadvantage towards whatever player, you know? Like if you give bound left more, player one has an advantage because player two is more into the corner than player one is, and you don't want to do that because it just becomes, um, you know, kind of awkward and stuff. So bound left and right have to always be equal. I'm just gonna lower it to um, 100 for now because I think that might work. Um, bound high is how the high the camera can go when you jump and or uh, super jump. Uh, for bound high, by default, it's negative 25. I'm gonna use zero because the stage will have no super jump. At least, nothing that I plan yet. By having a bound high zero, you automatically set the stage to not move upwards when the characters jump or super jump. So it'll just, it'll be like a still image, just like there, not moving. Bound low, it, Mugen does not support bound low because characters cannot 
jump below the screen and jump down is not uh, a finished code or it's just not it's not there it's just bound load is nothing leave it zero vertical follow means when the character has a, a high jump or a super jump um, how fast will the camera follow them and uh, because we're not really going anywhere we can leave this value the same uh, floor tension uh, all these notes here were very helpful but let's see floor tension the blah 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 okay floor tension means that uh, not that actually not the tension means that floor tension means oh okay minimum vertical distance the highest player has to be from the floor before the camera starts to move up to follow him so more or less if you're having a a super jump stage you want to set your floor tension to say anywhere from 40 to 90. I prefer 40, 50, or 60. Other creators like Motvin on EX Shadow prefer something much higher, like depending on what they, they are making. Motvin likes 90. I'm not sure why, but he does. Horizontal distance from player edge before. Okay. Tension is more or less um, how far the player has to be uh, from the edge of the screen before the camera starts to move, which follows the action more or less. Um, these two codes here are new to Mugen 1.0 and more or less uh, the overdraw high and overdraw low basically says um, how much this when this when there's a environment shake code in place this says how much of the screen to um, to show how many pixels beyond the top and bottom of the screen that may be drawn now if your stage is actually bigger than what it's shown then you can set this to a value and it will look like an actual earthquake it's going on in Mugen but if your screen is not shown it's going to be replaced with just blackness but that's okay too it doesn't really matter because it's that's how it was for years so no one really cares but um, if you if your stage is longer you may want to mess with these values until it looks proper to a character that uses environment shake um, blah, 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 blah. okay uh, cut high and cut low. The number of pixels into the top and bottom of the screen that may be cut from drawing when the screen aspect is shorter than the actual aspect. These parameters suggest a guideline and the actual number of pixels depend on the difference in aspects. Cut high and cut low are used for stages that are per se you're using a widescreen stage in a, uh, a regular square looking screen pack. Then you may want to use a cut high and cut low to fix that. Now if you're not using that then you don't need to. I've never used it, so I'm not really sure how to use it. I cannot explain how to use this. Ryan cannot explain how to use this. Stay away. Ooh. Now, start info. Uh, this is player one stuff here. Player one start position in X is negative 70. So imagine if we're looking at a. Huh, my music's gonna start playing in a second, I just realized. Unless I disabled it. Let's see. That's oh, not responding now. Yeah. It's going down somehow. Okay, let's try it again. Okay, so say this is the middle of the screen right actually let me just load up a stage training room good okay so say this is the middle of the stage this is zero zero negative seventy is negative seventy pixels to the left player two is positive seventy so that's that's uh, seventy pixels to the right this is what more or less sets up the player's start position they're um, left and right so x is left and right x is left and right y is up and down never start them higher than they should be or else it will just look like a mess you know you don't want your characters standing in the air on a stage where they should not even be doing something like that anyways no character should walk in the air unless they're Michael Jackson then they can moonwalk everywhere but the point is this start uh, this is the start position for player one this is the start position for player two um, set it to a decent value there and then facing uh, facing Oh, look, direction of a player facing. 1 equals right, negative 1 equals left. If you looked at my other tutorials, I've explained how facing works. But if you set this to negative 1 and set this to 1, he's going to be facing that way, and he's going to be facing that way, and we don't want that. Now, alternatively, there are two more uh, pieces of code to this that aren't really shown here. I can erase this, because you already know what that is. I'll copy this and paste it. 
change this to player 3, change this to player 4, change these codes here, P1, P3, 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 and P2 to P4, P4, P4. Now if you're playing a simultaneous match, this will control where player 3 and 4 are uh, positioned and aligned. Uh, I think 120 will work. Like, for instance, if I put 300, they can, they'll, they're going to end up like player 1's here, and player 3 is like over here at this border because they can't go to 300, so they'll be here. And then player 4 is going to be here also because they can't go to uh, 300, so they'll be here. So then everyone's like separated really far. Now it says common, Do, don't change these values. If you're making a low res or a high res stage and your bound left and right are below 1000, use 1000. If you're making a high, uh, high definition stage, an HD stage, your bound left and right are going to be more than a thousand. So what you need to do is raise this up. So say your bound right and left are uh, 1,500. This is your bound, uh, your bound left and right, 1,500. So if you have left bound, right bound, and you're common here, like this, your characters will not be able to reach the end of your stage because they're not allowed to. So what you would do is you would have to raise this to 2,000. You have to like add more on to it, so what they can, so they can move um, more than they're really allowed to. And this keeps the camera from going past the uh, 1,500 mark into the 2,000 mark. So because we're using 100, 100, we're just gonna leave this to 1,000. Okay, that's that. Uh, the bound. <clears throat> Uh, the more uh, bound is the distance from the left and right edge of the screen that the player can move to, typically 15. Now, if you're okay, let's see, let's see here. Okay, so you see how he's walking, and you see how he's moving here. This space, this is like 15 pixels right here, or yeah, 15 pixels away from the edge of the screen. Now, if I raise or lower this, he could be here running back. Oh, he could be here running back with this, and if I put 30. This will be 30. If I put 100, something like this would be 100, and the screen would move and follow him. So you always need to set these values to something that works with your stage. Uh, 15 works for low res and high res. I think for HD stages, you need to use like 60. So I'll put a note in there for that. Um, use 15 for low res. Use 30 for high res and use 64 HD res. See, simple enough, right? Okay, next is stage info, very important. Ground level with uh, uh, Z offset. Z offset is more or less uh, where the floor is. This, is. this code, the Z offset, defines the floor for the characters that they're standing on. I'll put ace against ace in the training stage. Now, you see this line? That's what their Z offset is set to. Their Z offset is a 190. So that's set to this line here. Now how this works is Z offset, it, it starts at 0, 0. Well, it starts at 0. And 0 is the top of the screen. So if you have a screen resolution, this is 480 right here. Uh, excuse me. This is 640 by 480. Now, 640 is left and right. We don't have to worry about that. 480 is up and down. Now say our Z offset is 200, right? 200 is going to be from 0 down to say somewhere like here. This is 200. And if you have a, uh, let's, let's see, okay, 240. Uh, 240 is half of 480, right? So the floor is going to be in the middle of the stage because we, we more or less divided this whole screen height by half. So this is the Z offset 240 right here in the middle. We don't want that. So for something like this, we would have to lower it down to say, um, this I, I I guess this is like four uh four hundred right here. I think this is the four hundred line or the four twenty line I think. Yeah, this is probably the four twenty right here. But since this is not the same uh stage def for um this stage, it's gonna be a different value. Uh let me see if I can show you the actual thing actually. Let me see. Mm -hmm. I'll show you how it works and affects it. Now the reason I have open, have to open Mugen manually this time is because um, Fighter Factory cannot load up Mugen if you're making stages. Okay, see this is the low res Mugen stage. See, so that's my floor. Now say I t test stage, you just go back to the select screen and reload the stage. It's going to reload the whole 
a dev file. So say I set the floor to now because this is a low res stage. See here, local core, low res resolution. Um, if I set my max height is uh, 240. Eh. So if I put 240 as my Z offset, my character's feet are going to be like into the ground. See, they're into the ground. That's not good. Now if I set them to say 180, they're going to be a bit higher than they really should. It doesn't look right, right? So we just keep playing with the Z offset until we find the value that we want. Or unless you're a bit experienced and you know how to actually place it, you just put what you want. And I guess I can show you this too while I'm at it. 60, 60. So this is the uh, the bound for the screen left and right. So, up, see? Yeah, yeah. Well, actually, this didn't work the way I planned. Maybe 60 is too much. Let me try 30. Yeah, see, he's a, he's a bit further away and he's running towards the wall when I put 30, as compared to 15, which is much closer. You probably can't see it because uh, uh, you're looking through a video and all that, but it, it does make a difference. Or maybe I'm just wrong. And, no, I'm not wrong. <laughs> yeah, he's closer now because 30 pushes him back like a bit, like this much back. Anyways, that, that's that's more or less that. Now, going on to the... um uh, uh, so. This is the basically the floor level, starting at the top, which is zero, and the bottom, which is oh my god. Next is auto turn. Auto turn leave this at one. This makes player face each other. If auto turn is zero, and the player jumps over the other player, they're not gonna face each other. In fact, I'll just show it to you so you see what it does. Ace and ace and nope, ace ace and training stage. Dee -dee -dee -dee, whoops. So nice. Oh, we got there. Very sexy. See, they don't turn around. So, you can play a game of grab ass. Ha ha, ha ha, ha ha. So, always leave this at one if you're making a regular stage or any stage in general. Always leave it at one. Um, reset BG more or less resets all the background elements and animations that you have playing b between rounds. So, say you have a stage where it plays an animation and then, you know, the player gets killed, round is over. The second round, if reset BG is 1, the animation is going to start over. However, if res reset BG is 0, it's not going to start over. It's going to continue playing like like a regular fighting game, you know? But you can use this for uh, other cool effects, depending on what you're really trying to make. Next here is the local core. The local core tells, the, tells Mugen what type of stage you're making. I'll put this here. 320, 240 equals low res stage. 640, 480 equals high res stage, and 1280, 720 equals HD stage, and then I think I think this is right. 190, 1090, 1080. No, that doesn't look right at all. I forget the value of the true HD stage, but whatever. You get the idea. Low res, high res, HD. We're making a low res stage, as you can see from the values. Save. Now, um, what the hell? Oh. Okay, so next is horizontal vertical scaling factor for drawing. This scales everything in the stage's sprites. So, you see what it looks like regularly. Let me show you what it looks like regularly. This is regularly, okay? Normal knows the pixel size. Save it. Go back. Show it again. And what do we get? Ginormous blocks of boxes. Let's scale up 0.5. And we'll see what we get. Tiny boxes stacked on top of each other and a big black squiggly shadowy thing. Ooh la la. Fire. Good, we don't want that. So we'll leave scaling to 1-1. One, one. If you're updating an old Lores stage, you more or less need, just need the local chord uh, code in here, but you may also need the X and Y scale code, but I doubt you would. Moving on to shadow. It, it pretty much tells you what shadow is here. Uh, zero is lightest, 256 is darkest. Um, the character's shadows here are... There are 96, so it's like they're 
they're visible, but not too visible, you know? Uh, this is color for the shadow. I don't think this works. You can mess with it, but I don't think it really changes the color of the shadow. It's it, more or less what it says. Red color, green color, and blue color. Next is the Y scale of the shadow. Um, this tells you if it's scaled down or up. If it scales down, this will get longer. If it scales up, this will get really big here. So let's try a value. Let's try one. See, their shadows are like much longer now. And then let's try negative one. He has no shadow. Okay, let's try negative three. That's a really high value. There you go. See, negative three puts a shadow on the top. So, say there's a spotlight down here. It can pretend to like show his uh, shadow on top of the wall. So it looks kind of cool, right? Yeah. Ha ha ha! You can't see the shadow of the effects, but it still looks badass. Okay. So that's more or less what shadow does. Default is 0 0.4. So 0 0.4. I'll leave that alone. I have no reason to mess with it. Then the fade range. Um, when the character jumps a certain distance height upwards, their shadow will fade out very fast. It, you almost can't really see it unless you like look at it carefully. But that's what fade range does. It lets you set um, a uh, a value of how high the character has to go before it starts fading out. So I'll erase this. I'll erase this. Wait, did I leave a? Co I did not leave notes there. Okay, good. So these are not notes here. Uh, reflection. If you want to use a reflection, this more or less is exactly what it sounds like. It's a reflection of the character with like half visibility. Uh, yeah, yeah. See, you can barely see it, but that's his reflection right there. Look at that. Yeah, that's a reflection right there. So, oh, sorry, that's why, 256, that's why the reflection didn't show. Before, the reflection code used to be on and off, now you can actually set the intensity of it. Ah, look at his reflection, it's exactly like him, because I set it to the max. So, if you want, like, the characters walking on the walls, you could, like, set the floor to zero, so this is the floor here, and then use the reflection code to make it look like they're upside down on the ceiling, which could be a cool little gimmicky thing, but, you know, it's only a gimmicky thing. So, reflection's off at zero. Next is music. We gotta get a song and adjust the volume. See here, 100 is for 100%. <sighs> oh boy. So now we're on to the actual stage coding. This here is all of the available um, background codes for a stage. There are much more advanced things that I will not explain in this video because I don't need to. I, I am not really using them. So I'll erase all of this. And uh, so this is the sprite background. Hold on for a second. Let's see. Pause. <laughs> Sorry about that. I had to step away for a second, so I paused it. And now I forget what I was saying. Okay. So yeah, these are all your uh, background codes that you can use for a background um, state. Uh, states are more or less objects. So your background, in this case, will be filled up three objects: a uh, a background A, background B, and floor. So three objects. That's all it's going to be filled with. Now, the bug uh, background equals zero. If you set this to one, if you want to clear the screen to magenta before drawing blah 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 blah. In short, if you set background uh, debug background to zero, it's going to appear black and shadowy. If you set debug background to one, it's going to appear like a big Per, uh, magenta blotch. Like so. Oh. Okay. It's because I have no um, actual state. So let's make one. BG uh, 0 background. Type equals. What are my options? Normal slash parallax. Normal. Sprite number. Okay. 
sprite number equal zero zero. Okay, start start position. Okay, start equal zero zero. Good. So let's test this, and you should see an image. Then you should see a lot of pink everywhere, or magenta, or purple, or whatever you want to call it. See, lots of pink everywhere. Yes. Also, when you make your stages, uh, make sure in your def file it links to the SFF file. See here, sprites, SPR, sprite. It's reading the stage zero sprite file right now, so we need to change that to Valhalla Planes 4, so it reads the Valhalla Planes uh, sprite file. Um, okay, and the bug is one, so the background is pink. You use the bug more or less to find out if you have any blank spots or empty spots in your uh, stage. Because you might, you never know, you might miss a, a pixel or something, and it just doesn't show up. So that's the problem with it. That's why you use uh, the bug background. Now, see, by setting it to zero zero, the image in the SFF file, when I load it up in Mugen, it more or less centerizes itself. This image is centered. If I go to the left, I have this many pink pixels. I don't know how many, but I have that many. And if I go to the right, I have the same that many set of pixels. So that's how you know it's centered because, well, for one, you centered it, and two, when you code it, it's at zero zero, and it's still centered. You can you can like take a screenshot of this and count the uh, the line of pixels, and take a screenshot of this side, count the line of pixels, and they'll be equal. There's a slight chance that uh, this might be off by one. That's because Mugen counts it funny, but more or less, um, that's how you put the image in. You have uh, background zero, uh, background, a. And uh, it's a normal type. It's just a single sprite. It's using sprite zero zero, and it's gonna have start zero one zero zero. So now I'll copy and paste that. I have another sprite at zero one. If you remember how the SFF was built, and then zero two. So this is background B, and this is gonna be floor. So now when I save this, you see I just copied and pasted and changed the values. This is but this is the basicest thing you need for a proper stage that will look and play right. Mm -mm -mm. No, well, see, this is what I, I did do. I messed up on. I forgot actually. See here, I put the wrong thing. This is start is zero. Start's always going to be zero. If you don't put start, it's still going to be zero. I meant to put sprite number uh, zero one, sprite number zero two. So and there and bada bing bada boopy. Look at that. Ooh. But now you see, since we've added the um, the other images, we're getting this green. And if you recall, the green was the alpha color that I used in the images. See, so green is the alpha color, the first color here. And this is showing up. So we don't want it to show up. So what do we do? We add a code called mask. If you look here, mask equals question mark. No, not really. Uh, okay, it doesn't really tell you what mask is. But you know what? Mask more or less... T uh, st uh, tells you if you should show the alpha color or not. Mask equals zero means show the alpha color. Mask equals one means do not show the alpha color. So by putting mask equals one, we disable the alpha color from the sprites without having to make them an animation or a transparency or something. So you see, now, let me take off the life bars. Now you see the stages here, the mountains in the back, the trees, the other background, and then the floor. So that's all nice and dandy, right? It looks pretty. Now let's actually put this together to make it look right. Now let's see. I'm going to move uh, this down by one pixel. Oh, yeah. This down by one pixel to see if it's uh, debugged properly or not. So I'm going to... Uh, this, is, this next part is like totally trial and error, unless you know what you're doing. So see, I move this down by one pixel. Start equals one. One is always down. Negative one is up. And look what, it moved down one pixel. And remember, if you're making a low res stage, one setting one here is actually two pixels in actuality. So just remember, it works in twos if you're making low res. If you're making high res, one is one. You know, if you're making HD, one is one. So, okay, so this can really stay as zero, zero, and that's perfectly fine. Now, as for this, we can probably move this down, say, I don't know, 10 pixels, see how that looks. Okay, move it down 10 pixels, and how does that look? Ouch, you hit me. Damn you. It still looks great. Ah, I see the reason now. Okay, so you see this gray spot here? This is from the flow, which is not meant to be shown. 
So I think I'll leave it back to zero zero. Now the floor. Haha, the floor is what we're gonna work on here. The floor is gonna be the parallax. Parallax is more or less a floor that is slanted in a, a 3D looking fashion to simulate a, a 3D floor, but it is not really 3D, it's just a slanted image that scales and swings. Swing? Yes, swing, swan, swing. So type is going to be parallax. And let's see, what do we need for parallax? See here, parallax only. These codes are only used for parallax. What a coincidence! and you have two options either x scale or width you see the note use either this or above but not both you cannot use both of these codes you need to use one or the other now if i'm if i remember correctly um x scale is best to use for stages from uh cps2 uh games such as street fighter alpha 3 or any um capcom game that has a parallax floor, X scale is best for that. But for a stage like this where we have um a where we have a um a, a box like tile, which is uh this. This is a box like tile because it's you know if you cut off half of it what do you get? You get a box. So it's like two boxes put together to make that. So because we're using this type of thing and we need it to slant sideways and everything, we're going to use width. Now, width is a more or less the top value and the bottom value. The top width and the bottom width. Um, to make this work in a way to make it look good, you take the top value, which is 128. So the width of the top would be 128. And the width of the bottom would be 128 times 2, which is 256. <coughs> good. So that's that. And I think that's all we would need to make the parallax work. It won't look right, but it's just going to work. It's just going to slant. Okay, so let's see. There you go. The parallax is all slanted now. So when we move, it gives off the impression of a 3D looking floor. If you take a look at it, you see how it moves like that? So it looks like a 3D floor. However, it's still pretty long, right? So we need to shrink it. And this is where the uh, y scale start comes in handy. Y scale start. Float in percentage. So y scale start equals 100. This means it's scaled 100%, meaning it's 100% of the actual sprite. So this is the full sprite size right here. So we'll use 200, save it, and that'll cut this in half. So this whole thing is going to shrink down into half of it. So you'll see what it looks like here. There you go. So it's all those pixels are smudged up to get this half. And then we'll just move this down with the start. So I'll try 128. I, I just guessed the number, so it's nothing that I know beforehand. I guessed a bit too um too low. So this looks like 126. Because remember, one pixel moves two times. This is four pixels. So that's obviously two, so I subtracted two. Okay, I'm still wrong. Five. Mm, okay, there you see five works for like excellently. Yeah, okay. So you see five works. I got the snow and the background and stuff, and it looks pretty cool, right? Only difference is what happened here. There's like nothing there. So what the hell? I go back to the oops. I go back to the uh, background definition and look for what I can use. Delta change location per camera movement. That seems handy, but that's not it. Mask. We use that array. Velocity, we don't want it to slide around. Tile, huh? What's this tile? Unbelievable. Let's do it. So, tiling. How does tiling work? Tiling works as X and Y. If you put one here, it's going to tile indefinitely left and right. If you put one here, it's going to tile indefinitely up and down. So, I will save this, show it to you what it looks like. So, you'll see the screen is going to be, huh? That's strange. It didn't tile up and down like it's supposed to. Huh, I, I didn't know, I'm not sure why that's happening. But anyways, it tiles left and right perfectly fine as you can see here. I can't tell the parallax too well. Yeah, I, I can't see it because like video lag. Okay, well anyways, uh, this is going to be zero because it's not going to tile up and down, more or less. And if you're making a 1.0 stage, you need to have tile spacing. 
it's very important and it's a requirement to have tile spacing if you're using a tile code. You just use tile spacing equals zero zero. This tells you how much space is between each tile when they're uh, tiled. So let's put 50 in between each tile. So it's going to show the image, space out 50, show the image again, space out 50. Now, if it doesn't work here. I'm not sure why it's not working here. That's so strange. I've never had this problem before. Hmm. Okay, that's kind of odd. But anyways, tile spacing 0, 0 is best. I, I would not recommend another value. Um, now for for parallax, you also need a, a well for all trigger all um state uh, stage objects. You need a delta code delta equals one one. And I'll put this in every single one of them. Delta basically tells the, the sprite how to move when the player is moving. Like if I put zero for the x, uh, it's not going to go up and down, so I'll leave that to one. Zero zero, and then I, I try the stage. As you see, the background is not moving anymore. The floor is moving, but the background is not moving, which is kind of cool, but it's not really what we want here, right? So we need to fix that. We need to find the right delta value. If you put it to one, it's gonna move like it's, like it's just in the background, like just there. So I'll try 0.5 and 0.7. The further the way, the further away the object is, the less it moves. So you see how they move now? Look at that. The background is moving slower than the, for the other background in front of it. See, see? Huh, I'm having a strange lag for some reason. Not sure why. Anyways, so you see what the delta can do to it? It does that, and that's pretty cool. Now let's see. If I if you set these to like lower values. Like three and five, you can make it look. You can make the stage appear longer than it really is, because of the way the objects move in the background. It'll, it'll trick your eyes into thinking it's a longer stage. See, I mean, look at this. It looks longer because it's slower now, but we have still have a lot of extra crap on the side. So let's get rid of that. Uh, the bound left. Let's try seventy-five. Seventy-five. Do, 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 do. Mm, still a bit too much. Uh, let's try 50-50. I may end up with like a super low value for no reason. You can you cannot go into negative values for this. <coughs> it's just not really possible to go into a negative value for um, the screen bound, uh, the bound left and right, because then your character won't be able to move. You know what? That's just, that's just strange. Why am I going so low? This is not right. Uh, okay. Yeah, see? I use a value like zero zero and it, it, they just don't move anywhere. Let's try ten ten. Oh, my I forgot the negative ten. Oh 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 always have to be the same as bound right except it except bound left has to be negative value. Forgot that piece. So let's see. Okay, very, very little. I'm not sure why it's even moving like that. Huh. That is strange. But you know what? I'll I'll put this back to 150, and I'll mess with the deltas until it allows me to let them move off the screen like that. So okay, let's try it again. This is 150 now. Okay. So we'll put this to one, and this would be 0.3. As you can see, the lower the delta goes, the slower it goes, and the more it'll stay on screen and fit. Do, 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 do. Okay. Point. So it's point zero 0.05, and this will be point 1.5. Yeah. The, 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 the 15. Now, I'm just trying these values. I don't know what value is really going to work. Point 0.3, point zero 0.06. Um, okay, yeah. Bec I just realized something. Because these images are the same size, they're gonna have to be the same um, same delta for them to look right. Yeah. See. Yeah. So that's how that's gonna be. All right. Mm, let's see what else can we do here. Um, 
So we'll lower this to 35, 35, and this will limit the uh, the distance off that they can go. No, not that stage, this stage, good. I'm still getting the pink there, huh. I gotta mess with that stuff more. Okay, let's see, 35, 35 is not working. This is not working. Hmm. What to do? I'm not, I'm not even sure why it's happening like that. Let's try 100 then. Back to 100, just for the way we were before. 100 should definitely work. Oh my god, what the hell? <laughs> okay. Mm. 3 and delta 5. See, trial and error. This is how you learn to do stuff. Because it sucks when you don't know how to do something. Uh, this is the background. That's the pink. Um, 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 hmm. What can I do here? What can I do here? Hmm. Yeah, the delta would have to be low if I'm doing that. Okay, I'll try this again. Still pretty fast, so two. Okay, so that's that's fairly good there. Um, need to mess with the camera a little bit. So how am I going to do that? Uh, okay, bound left and bound right. Sorry I'm taking so long trying to get this to work right. It's just I didn't expect to have this issue with this. But I guess that's the price for learning the hard way. Hmm. It is so strange how this is not working like I thought it would. It, it works in my head, I could say that much. Okay, not that, not that. Not these either. Uh, I'm not sure changing this would help me, but I'll see what it does. Maybe it might help. No, it does not help. I guess I kind of have to leave this as one image. I can't give it that depth of uh, a parallax. Well, I can't give this a depth of uh, layers like I want. So, 0.5 and 0.5. You know, I forgot to even check how big this background is. Let me see. Let's see, this background is total of oh shit this is why this stage is made for 320 resolution so that's as big as it's gonna get it's not gonna get bigger than this and I cannot tile this top so that sucks balls okay so I'll, I'll, unfortunately I have to end the tutorial here because I can't really make the stage the way I want to this is gonna be the stage right here like this and as for this, um, the bound left and right are going to be zero because the player can't move left or right. If they move left or right, you're going to have a, a a pink screen. And oh my god, this this just sucks balls. So in the end, the, I couldn't teach you parallax either because I didn't get a chance to properly use it. But you did see how to code a parallax. You did see what it did, and you see what the uh, the delta scale, the y scale does to it. And there's no super jump or anything, so I have to find a better stage to do a, a stage tutorial on. But you guys can use this as a star for a simple stage. I mean, look at this. This looks uh, pretty good, even though I'm not allowed to do super jumps or anything to follow the characters. And I'm not even allowed to move to the side either. I'm kind of restrained to this box. But it's not that bad, honestly. So I'm going to release this stage with the video. Um, thanks for watching, I guess. Sorry for the disappointment and uh, wasting some of your time. My bad.